Hi, I'm Jeff Norris. Today we want to talk about mice versus rats and the differences between the two and some misconceptions. Um, I'd like to put up a picture so you can see and kind of follow along with me. As you see the roof rat, or otherwise known as Rattus rattus, um, has a different um, body style and stuff of a Norway. And if you look to the right where it says young rat and house mouse, you can see why they're easily confused. A lot of times people come to Florida and they don't want to admit that they have rats in a house. Um, they're from the Midwest and have dealt with field mice all their life. Two completely different animals here, as you can see in the thing. A uh, field mouse, the head will be smaller. The tail will be, you know, about the same size, but their feet will be small also. With the young juvenile roof rat, they have a larger head and large feet. Um, also on a house mouse, the ears are usually noticeably a little bigger. So that kind of tells you the difference between the two. You will find house mouses or field mice in areas of central Florida um, because they're primarily grain eaters. Um, they, that's what they like and that's where they're found. Um, they're not so much a commensal rodent where they're living in houses, but they, are a, uh, they do enter at times. Uh, we found them in Parrish, Florida and Mayaca City, Florida, or we have actually found them in downtown areas where they've been brought in with shipments. Um, uh, office supplies one time and a couple different things so uh, you really can't stop them when they come in with shipments. Um, the, Nor the difference between the Norway rat and the roof rat we'll get to in a little bit but let's talk about uh, mice or the house mouse first. Um, normally they live outdoors in fields and stuff like that. Um, they occasionally migrate into structures like I said. Um, mostly found out in the uh, Rural areas where there's going to be grains um, and stuff kept to feed livestock and such. Um, the house mouse only requires, or, or mice as some people call them, one-tenth of an ounce of food and one-twentieth of an ounce of water per day. And if it's a moist food, they can obtain that water from that. That's enough water. So they need very little water and very little food to survive. Um, they usually um, will have um, lifespan is about one year on a house mouse, um, and they are prolific breeders. Um, they reach sexual maturity in six weeks, six weeks, and they will have five to six young per litter and up to eight litters a year. So if you do the math on that, you can, in a matter of no time, have thousands of mice just from one. Roof rats. Roof rats are called the palm rat, the citrus rat. Um, all those are different names that people, slangs that they've given these rats. But the proper name is a roof rat. It's Rattus rattus is a scientific name. Um, they live in attics and roof spaces. Um, they love to breed and mate and stay up in those places. They do come out to eat and um, look for um, food and stuff on the outside. But again, they don't need a whole lot of water. Um, they reach sexual maturity in three to five months and have six to eight young per year. Um, so it takes a little longer for rats to breed and um, they have six litters per year. So they're not as prolific as mice, but they still do a good job of expanding their colonies. Um, they consume approximately one half ounce to one ounce per day of food um, from various sources and um, they do need water but um, against, again it's about an ounce per day. They don't need a whole lot of water and if the food is wet they will get their water intake from that. Um, roof rats uh, love homes and, and that's why we're called roof rat because they're up in the attics all the time. Um, when you go up to see your Christmas decorations and get them down usually people see the the droppings and call us. That's a, that's a time of year because most of the time you're not in your attics unless you're putting something up to store it or bringing something down or you hear something in the attic. So let's talk about Norway rats. Norway rats are not real common in Florida. They're only along the coastal areas of such places like um, City Island, um, St. Armand's Key. Those areas seem to have more Norway rat problems. 
they're more of a meat eater. Um, they do eat vegetables and uh, grains and stuff, but uh, they would rather consume meats than that. Um, they're going to be a larger rat. Uh, they're going to consume about the same as a uh, um, roof rat, um, somewhere around an ounce or half ounce to ounce of food and an ounce of water a day. Um, again, if the food is moist, they can get their water and take from that. And that's what people um, sometimes, you know, talk about how they living in my attic with with a roof rat or the Norways. You know, that's how. You know, they can take very little moisture to survive. Um, the Norways will burrow um, and put in tunnel systems and stuff like that. But again, not a big thing here in this area. Um, usually on coastal areas is where they're at, um, and they're not too much inland. They just don't do well there. So most of the inland stuff that we have, um, you know, between, we'll say, uh, State Route 17 to the coast is uh, roof rats. They're the most common. Let's talk about equipment for um, trapping or getting rid of rats. Um, there's a, a procedure that needs to be followed if you want to get rid of roof rats. Uh, and I'm going to talk about in your houses right now, or domiciles. Uh, first thing you have to do is you have to seal the house. You have to find the entry points and seal them. And no guys and gals, spray and cheese is not the, uh, the insulating foam is not the way to do it. They will chew right through that stuff. Um, there are some products out there that you can put behind that foam to keep them out. And uh, we'll do a, a, another video on that also to explain the proper ways to exclude a home. So the home has to be excluded or sealed up. And then the second step is to trap the uh, rats that are inside the dwelling. And that will be done over, you know, a several day period and removed. Um, and that's where I want to talk about equipment. There's all sorts, it's all sorts of equipment out there. One thing I will warn everybody against is do not put any type of rodenticide, commonly known as decon or something in your attic. This is opening up uh, Pandora's box for you. Uh, you will have dead rats sometimes in areas that you cannot even get to. Have to cut walls open, have drywall repairs, have try to find matching wallpaper. You guys get the idea. It's not pretty. Um, mechanical traps is the best. But one problem we find is people try to handle this on their own. They try to go and go to Home Depot or something and do it themselves. And what ends up happening is they'll use the wrong trap, like a mouse trap, or they'll use the right trap, like a rat trap, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know the proper positions. And what happens is this trap ends up hitting the rat, um, stunning it, and making them what we call trap shy in the industry. Trap shy, then we have to resort to using different types of traps and different ways of doing it. Um, there's also live traps that are available. If people want them humanely removed and, uh, you know, taken off the property, uh, there are live traps available. But for the most part, uh, you know, the good old Victor rat trap is, is the diehard uh, one to use. And here at Nuisance Wildlife, we prefer the, the professional series. Uh, I've had good luck with them for 19 years, and um, you know what they say, you can't be be build a better rat trap. And that's exactly what we have found. Um, you know, the long and short of it is, is rats aren't good in your home. They carry parasites and diseases, um, and you know, they get into your air conditioning ducts, they soil your um, insulation, and as soon as you see them or hear them or something, you should start a process to get rid of them. Um, rodenticides are okay to use, but only when a house has been sealed and on an outside of a, a dwelling. And we'll have another video on rodenticides too, I'm sure. Um, there's so much to learn about that. But basically a three, uh, a three or four step process. One, sealing of the home. Two, trapping of the vermin that are up there. Three is disinfecting and or replacing insulation and such. And you don't always have to do that. Um, a lot of companies try to scare people into doing it. It's not always necessary. And then the fourth option is, again, depending on your situation and the landscape and all, um, 
is rodent side boxes on the outside. Rats are gnawing chewing animals. Their incisors keep growing. They have to keep, keep cut down. If they don't cut them down, they will grow back into their jaws and they couldn't eat. So um, rodent side pro pro uh, programs are really great ideas in certain situations. Um, remember this, uh, there was a big push for native landscaping a few years ago and um, it, it's great stuff. It's low water, low maintenance, but please remember when you install this type of landscape, you are also welcoming the critters. Um, native plants, native landscape, you're going to bring those in. Uh, another good way to keep rid of rats around your home or yard is get rid of any bird feeders. I know everybody likes them, but they spill grain out. And what have I said all day? Rats, mice, and Norway rats, uh, the roof rat and Norway rat, they all love grain. So, you know, bird seeders, not a great idea if you're trying to keep rodents out of your, you know, area. Another thing is black snakes and stuff are beneficial. They keep poisonous snakes away and they keep the rat population down. So that's it for today. I hope you guys have learned a little bit more, more about mice and rats and uh, the confusion between the two at times. Um, you can always call us at Nuisance Wildlife, 941-729-2103, uh, and we'll come out and give you a free estimate on rat-proofing your home. And just remember, sometimes it's cheaper and easier to call a professional.